Have you ever had your transmission not able to go into first gear or second gear, or it was really difficult to go into first or second? Well, this is what happens. This is the part that actually locks up. This is the one-two shift collar. If you look, I'm trying to slide it forward and backward here. It's not happening. This is the actual shift collar that's supposed to slide all the way forward and all the way back. I'll show you what the new one's gonna look like here in a minute. Now here is the one two shift collar disassembled. This is the one that's locked up that kept the owner of this vehicle from being able to shift. You can see it won't go in or out at all. Here's the new one. How smooth, smoothly that goes. You'll see how smooth it is when it's all back together as well. That's it. That's why one two gets messed up. Missing gears, what happens when this swings forward to the next actually engage the collar on the gear it gets smeared so then it wedges being that the factory tolerances are so tight so this is six hundred dollars list just from the dealer that's why these tranny repairs are so expensive from what i've read this one is a different material and it has a little looser clearances so you definitely want to replace it you don't want to just try to free this one up and file it down um, on my own personal vehicle i switched to this probably about thirty thousand miles ago and about 150 quarter mile passes, so I've had no problem with this new setup at all. Now here is the gear assembly. It's reassembled now with the brand new 1-2 shift collar and the new 1-2 synchronizer rings. So that's basically what happens when you shift. This would grab this gear and engage this gear. This gear is already touching another gear, so you don't really shift gears. You engage them with the shift collar, which hooks it up to the shaft. So if you see, when I grab that, it turns the whole thing. But this is how it should have worked. Here are some of the synchronizer rings. This is what allows your car to shift smoothly. If you ever have a car that shifts and makes that little bit of crunch, even under normal driving, these are what wear out. The, we, the OEM ones are brass. This ring right here is used for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, the same ring. These two rings are first and second. You can see the first is also brass. This one actually has a friction material on it. This brass design has been used since way back in the muscle car era, so it works well, but actually you're going to see the new ones are a little different, that these are even what the dealer gets. Now here are the new synchronizer rings. Here is a new 3, 4, 5, and 6. They're all the same, but if you notice this style is different. You got the old brass and you got the new friction material. It's obviously going to allow it to uh, grab gears a little quicker. This is just actually a factor, you know, an OEM update through the dealership. So anytime you get it rebuilt and you get the right parts, it's going to be upgraded. And if you look at this, this one's real aggressive for one, two. Both first and second gear have this versus the old first and second gear. One was brass and one was a milder friction material. This actually feels like sandpaper. So one and two are going to feel great. And that's another reason why you have to upgrade the shift collar just even if you want to change the synchronizers because this is a lot more abrasive and the new synchronizer collar is actually stronger so pretty much mandatory to change all your synchronizer and that one two shift collar but that one two shift collar almost always gets messed up and that's usually why they get taken apart so in my experience usually the trannies just need a reseal new synchronizers and a one two shift collar and that's it people sometimes tell you that the gears break this and that if your only issue is not going into first or second, it's not the gears, it's the one two shift collar. You obviously got to inspect the other side where the shift collar engages the gear, but usually that just can be taken care of with a file. Now I'm going to show you the inner workings of a B5S4 6-speed transmission. 
um, for those who are unaware of how, exactly how they work and to help you understand them better. Um, number one, you're going to have a shift shaft. This is usually sitting in a different housing. And this is going to move this way and this way. When you're going in neutral, side to side, this is going like this. When you shift, this is twisting and grabbing these gates. For instance, this gate right here is reverse. This one right here next to it is 1, 2. This one's 3, 4. And this one right here is 5, 6. What you can see right here is the 3, 4. So we spin the input shaft. And you want to see how it works basically just moves this collar which engages the shaft itself into the gear. So you don't shift the gears, you're engaging the gears with a collar. So these are the synchronizer rings, the updated ones, and these are the little frictions that allow you to shift smooth. So when these wear, that's what makes your car crunch. Here's fifth and sixth gear at the rear of the transmission. As I'm turning it, it helps engage it. See, I grab a gear, and then I would go the other way. And that's the two for fifth and sixth. So that's how it works. And then what you feel, when you feel it click when it goes in gears, there's actually these little detents, little spring-loaded balls right behind it. And these go in here and sit in little, there's little divots for all the shift, all these shift shafts for all the gears. There's two holes here, there's two here. So this is what you feel, the actual spring tension of this ball hitting a tiny little ramp inside. So that's what you, everybody thinks is the notchiness. This spring tension is why the B5 S4 six-speeds feel so notchy, so to speak. These are really stiff springs versus other versions.